All right, joining us now, she is the new head coach at a place she knows very well. At least we'll find out how well she knows it back because she played there and now she's back as, of course, an alum and as the head coach at UC San Diego coming over. Uh, I speak of Nikki Palmer making her In the Circle on D1 Softball Podcast debut. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. What does that mean now to say you're the head coach at, at a place where you played once upon a time? Did you ever imagine that? Uh, with, and we'll talk about this journey because this program has certainly been growing as a lot since the last, you know, you put on the jersey. <laughs> it certainly has. Uh, this program has seen every level of NCAA softball, um, and I am really grateful and very proud to be here. Um, honestly, like getting into coaching, it was always my dream to come back here. Um, so, you know, having it come sort of full circle and having an opportunity to come back here and coach at a place that means so much to me is um, an absolute blessing, and I, I couldn't be more excited to get going here. Well, let's talk about that journey, because I think when people first saw the news, hey, Coach Palmer leaving, uh, coming uh, to becoming the new head coach at UC San Diego, leaving UC Riverside, had been there eight seasons, that might look like a, oh, that's interesting what you need, but there's more to this story. You just mentioned it. You played there. So just tell us, those that may not be aware, your journey on how you ended up at UC San Diego as a player and then kind of go from there from a coaching career. I definitely had a different journey as a high school kid. Um, my junior year of high school, I got in a car accident and almost took my life. It broke my neck and took me out. The, and back then it was the summer of your junior year was when you got recruited. Right. And so that's when I got in my car accident. And so it felt like all these schools, you know, I was high academic, uh, athlete. So speaking to Ivy League, speaking to all these other schools and getting recruited pretty well for my age, um, kind of taken away because, you know, I got in a car accident. I was in a neck brace for a long time and didn't know if I was going to be able to play again. And then, um, you know, coming back my senior year, um, there was a couple schools in the pictures and UC San Diego was one of them. And they were in the stands and waited throughout my journey. Is she going to come back? Is she going to be the same player? Um, and long story short, I was able to commit to UC San Diego and, um, one of the best decisions in my life. I made some of my best friends while playing here, um, got to play for an awesome coach and an awesome program. And, um, you know, inevitably it led me into coaching and I spent my first year coaching as a volunteer assistant here at UC San Diego. And so, um, it, ignited my love for the game on the other side of the desk and um I really haven't looked back since and yeah I, I'm really proud of what we did at UC Riverside I was there for eight years I wasn't really planning on leaving um you know I I, we, I talked to my wife we kind of always said there was maybe one job I would leave for and it was this and so when the call came in you know it was <laughs> surprising and a lot of things to think about but ultimately um, an immense honor to come back and give back to, you know, the program that gave me so much. So. Well, now for those that may not be aware, when you played at UC San Diego, there was not a division one program. Uh, what it was division two. Two. Yeah. And it's still now the program is kind of fun is kind of transitioned in from a D two to D one just recently. Did you ever imagine that this program can grow into being a division one program at any point was that of anything that crossed your mind either uh after you finished playing when you're coaching or, or did you, that ever cross your mind that that could be a possibility for the program i think yes and no I, the 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 athletics here at uc san diego have always been so prestigious and it was always a privilege to be an athlete at uc san diego because it's one of the best academic schools in the country so you're getting one of the best degrees that you can you know, at sort of an Ivy League school of the West Coast, essentially, and you're getting one of the best degrees you can get. And so then it's a privilege to be a, a scholar athlete here as well. So it's like, you know, um, to think about it going into the D1 era is because of the support that the campus provided the athletic department. It's because of the investment from the students here on campus. So that was not really a surprise to us alumni, obviously excited about that. Um, transition into D1, which we're finally postseason eligible this coming season, which, I mean, lucky for me, I get to be a part of that. Awesome. And we get to go after a championship. But, you know, I think that seeing the um, 
you know, the support from the from the campus population and campus, you know, administration has allowed this to happen. And so it's not really a big surprise. Um, but I think that it makes us kind of a sleeping giant, honestly, and it's exciting to be a part of it. How has the school changed since you were a student there? I, I would imagine you've been following up even prior to you being the head coach here. Obviously, as an alum, you would be natural to follow the school as it progresses from the D2 to D1, et cetera. How has it changed? Um, campus life itself has changed a lot. We have some really cool things. We have a Target on campus. Like it's <laughs> Wow. That's a huge selling point, right? Um, there, there's colleges within UCSD. There's, there's colleges on campus within the university. And so when I went here, there was six colleges and six was brand new. And now they're going on nine. So we have a seventh college, eighth college, and they're going on nine. So that has changed a lot. Um, yeah, the, the infrastructure on campus has really changed. And again, the investment in athletics is just it's uh, really pronounced and it's it's really impressive, I should say, what they're investing into athletics here. And of course, it was unique because they when they moved, make the move to Division One, they're in the Big West. Of course, they have to be right with you. What was that like? Because you had to compete against them when they arrived into the conference. Was that awkward? No. Oh, my gosh. It was such an honor. It was really cool. I got to share the field with my coach. I got to, you know, play at um, the stadium that, you know, was brand new and beautiful and um, supported by big alumni backing. And it, it just was, yeah, it was really an honor, honestly. It, it was very, very neat. Um, and it's only kind of grown since then. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool. <laughs> it sounds like to some degree, you've almost had to relearn the school because it is so different, so much bigger than it was, right? Is it? It's grown so much, you're like almost relearning it? Is that accurate? Yeah, no, totally. I'm five days in here and like drinking from a fire hose. It is. <laughs> my my to-do list is like so big. Uh, so, you know, you know how it is. N number one, get your transfers in here and your assistant coaches and figure out the rest later. So, um, but yeah, it's, it has changed a lot and i'm really grateful that all the coaches here have been like how do you need help what do you need ask us everything really um welcoming so that's been super helpful five days in you mentioned you know this was a dream job at the deal and you, when they called you were you surprised were you expecting the call like what is that like when you know okay this job's open but at the same time you don't know what they are interested in doing what they might do you have beyond your control what is that like for you there? Are you, are you antsy? Are you like, Ooh, should I reach out? Like, what is that like for you? Yeah, that's a long answer <laughs> to, to, to get it down. Um, it felt like a, a big honor. Like it was emotional. I will say like, um, wow, this is happening. Um, you know, you always kind of like, okay, that's the dream job. And you repeat it in your head. And so it gives it life. But then to get the call, you're like, okay, wow, this might actually happen. And then emotional on the other side of the coin, because I'm really proud of what we did at Riverside. And I'm very emotionally connected to my players and staff and colleagues at Riverside that, you know, that was a big decision to walk away from something that was in such a good place. Like we had built something great and we're continuing to grow on that, et cetera. So that was tough, um, but ultimately, like the the outpouring of alumni and from the administrative side, what they understood of the history and tradition of UC San Diego softball alumni and the value that was placed on that, while well, also like entrusting me and what I've done in my career, but just um, giving that sort of life and recognition of that, um, to told me that like they have the right things right priorities in place here and they want to kind of continue what's already been built they're not trying to level the house they're trying to build on this beautiful home that's been built so many years over the years by all these alumni so yeah as you go through the process and you're offered the job what goes through your mind were you emotional was it an emotional moment when the, you know privately there or, or what was describe that moment when you're offered that job um 
Well, my administrator called and said, we'd like to offer you the job. And then uh, she was going to get into the details of like what that what that means, right? All the nuances of the offer. I said, I need you to pause for a second. And she was like, okay. Like, I just need to take this moment in because it is it was it is the dream and i just really needed to feel that moment before it just got so you know mechanical with all the moving parts because it, i hadn't had a minute to kind of appreciate the realization of the dream coming through and the importance of taking on this role and representing all of these former players alumni donors staff like everybody that has over the years poured so much into this program and my coach and everything, you know, like there, it's just so important. Like I can't undervalue underscore that enough. And so I, I did, I asked her to pause. I need to take this in for a minute before you get into it. It's just amazing. I don't know if I'm going to say yes, but I just need to take this in. Let's make sure the rest of the pieces line up, but wow. Thank you. And so, yeah, inevitably, obviously it worked out. Um, but yeah, it was very emotional moment. I will say it's good that you take a pause. Nothing wrong with taking a pause. Sometimes you gotta re gonna let it sink in first before you uh, rush into a decision. Uh, I think that's very intelligent move uh, on that scenario. So you take the job, and I remember John Calipari when he made the move to Kentucky says the easiest thing to do is to say yes to your dream job, and that's what he said at the time about what Kentucky was. The hardest thing is to leave. A place that you enjoy being at i would imagine that that's something you can relate to because while this was your dream job that didn't make leaving uc riverside any easier did it no not at all it was very um you know what they say bittersweet is very two-sided and you know i'm really trying very very hard not to get lost in the hustle of the job because you know it, this isn't my first time taking over a program and so you just want to do all the things as fast as you can because i know what it looks like at the end if i don't get some key transfers in i know what it looks like if i don't get my assist the right assistant coaches here in time etc and so i you know i've just been head down hustling and i have been really trying to be thoughtful of taking my moments to enjoy the process and then also to grieve grieve where I was leaving because exactly what you said like it was a great situation yes we have more resources here but there were some amazing things that we had at UC Riverside and I had a great relationship with my administrators and I had some amazing players on the team that I love very dearly and some staff that I work very close with and people that kind of became family and so um you know, there was some ugly crying <laughs> going in there for a little bit, allowed myself to, you know, experience the sadness. And I think that that was very healthy. And now, you know, I'm able to enjoy this process. I was walking, today's my second day on campus officially. And so I was walking from the car to uh, Remac Arena, which is, you know, was here when I played and I heard the seagulls flying over and I saw the sun kind of peeking up and um, the, the ocean line. And I just was like, holy cow, this is incredible. Like, how blessed am I? Um, and I want to share that with my players and my staff. And I want the alumni to feel that very deeply that um, I am doing this for them. So I, I don't take that lightly. And um, I'm very grateful for it. What was the message once you obviously take over that you're named the head coach? What was the message to the current players on the roster once you got to talk to them and, and be introduced? Well, that's always crazy for those that are not on in this side of the world. The the sequencing of timing to announce a, a, a significant head coaching change has to be timed perfectly. And so I had to go into this room and tell my beautiful, amazing, lovely UC Riverside players that I was not going to be returning to them. And then about 30 minutes later, <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde my face to show my excitement on a Zoom call with the UC San Diego players because I wanted them each to feel, you know, the actual emotions of it, which w was challenging for me, but important that they see that this is important, that this is of value to me, um, the UC San Diego girls. So um, I think they took it pretty well. I did talk to um, our returning ace pitcher, Caldwell, and asked her what she thought a couple of days later. And she said, well, you know, it was kind of, we weren't sure what the vibe was on the Zoom call, um, but then I guess a lot of the UCR girls had reached out and said, you guys are pretty, pretty lucky. You're getting a good one there. And, um, you know, that's pretty special to me. I don't 
Yeah. So that, that was awesome. Um, but my message to the girls was, Hey, you know, you guys have been building some really cool stuff. I don't know if you're aware of the history and tradition that exists in this program, but we're going to re incorporate that in a big way not that it hasn't already been done but we're going to really lean into that now that you're being coached by an alumni um and we're going to continue to build on the success that you guys have sort of started getting moving here we have a lot of successful programs 21 out of the 23 teams at uc san diego qualified or would have qualified for postseason last year so this is a successful championship department and we are going to be a part of that. And so they got to get their heads wrapped around that right away, that we are going to be doing some big things here. And it's going to take a lot of work, um, but it's going to be awesome. So when you were talking to the players, did you have to mention you were an alum? Did they know you were already an alum? I'm always fascinated with 18 to 23 year olds. You know, who knows? Sometimes some of them are not the big history buffs. But did you have to mention that you're an alum or did they know you were an alum? How, I'm curious on that. Well, to be fair, um, our administrator announced me as alumni. Smart. Um, That's good. Yep. But I, I have made an effort to stay involved because it is, I think you're getting this. It's very important to me. Um, it's, it's a big part of who I am as a person at UC San Diego softball. And so um, I have been at a lot of alumni games. I am, I have for the last however many years served on the Hall of Fame committee. I try to stay involved you know, for from a professional, respectful distance, being in sure. the same conference, but I try to make sure that I'm staying involved as much as I can, and I think that is a similar sentiment that a lot of our alumni share. So um, it'll be great to kind of continue that history and tradition. You mentioned, you know, you played, then you got into right away into coaching. Was coaching always the plan? Was that you were talked into getting to coaching? How did you end up getting into the coaching profession? Yeah, coaching was not part of the plan. I was in my teaching credential program and I experienced a, a we'll just say like a traumatic event in my life yeah. and um, was kind of lost. And my coach, um, Coach Gherkins, kind of like, I always say like, she like grabbed me by the ear, you know, she called me and she said, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. And she's like, well, why don't you, this is back before a lot of these rules. <laughs> why don't you come on the bus with us to whatever away tournament? And um, long story short, she had me sort of in like a observational sort of coaching role. And at the end of it, she goes, what would you think? And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, what do you think about coaching? You need to be coaching, like really clear. And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty cool, you know, 22 year old me. And she goes, you need to be coaching. You're joining our staff. You're a new volunteer. That's that. And I haven't looked back since. Wow. Um, yeah. So it wasn't for her. You, you'd probably be teaching somewhere right now. Likely, likely. That's amazing. It's amazing though how coaches have that big of an impact on you, uh, and certainly she helped build this program to get it to where it is now and this growth uh, of this size. You've mentioned the growth of the school, the growth of the program. What? You've mentioned kind of more resources. It sounds like you have here. Just talk about what you have there. Uh, that really attracted you beyond being an alum. Forget being the alum. You'd have been probably attracted to this job even if you were not an alum. Yeah, I think that the alumni piece, it, it was the biggest piece for sure. me. Um, I, I think a lot of coaches would say like, oh yeah, the, the resources is way better and so I need to make that jump. But I'll be honest with you, Eric, this is not, I'm, I'm, you mentioned it. I'm a D2 kid. Like I'm used to rolling up my sleeves, grabbing a rake and, you know, doing whatever's needed. And it doesn't bother me. It never has. And so resource wise, like I have a great relationship with my athletic director at UC Riverside. And, you know, he always would tell me like, I don't, you don't ask for much unless it's something really important because I just try to find a way like, you know what, we need another machine. Let's fundraise for it. Hey, we need this, you know, let's, let's make this happen some other way, or let's just do that ourselves. Like, so the resources here are awesome and they are in a, um, a jump up from where, where I was, but that wasn't all of it. But yeah, we have some, the strength and conditioning area is unbelievable here. They have a dietitian on staff. They have mental health support for the student, the scholar athletes, and they have um, sports psych on staff, like the amount of people to help um, really makes the scholar athlete experience that much better. So that is a huge piece for me is that, you know, I know my players are going to be well taken care of all the way around. 
holistically. So, with what is the identity that you want UC San Diego softball to look like under your leadership once it's kind of built on the field? What is it the identity people can expect? Um, intelligent, bright women that are really hard to beat. I think is kind of it. Like I want our alumni to, they already have, but to con continue going out into the world and becoming powerful women and what they do, not just somebody in there, but being the best in their fields. And when we're on the field that we're respecting our opponent, but we're constantly in the top half of the conference, if not contending for a championship. And I do think we have the resources to do that here. It's only a matter of time. Did your phone blow up with a bunch of your former teammates, alums, once uh, the news came out? Yes, and I, I, again, I don't take that lightly. I, I went back and counted them, and between calls, texts, and messages on social media, I had over forty. So that's oh, oh, holy macro! Hopefully, uh, I don't know if you're able to get to all of them at this point with everything you got to do, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, if not, you can tell them you appreciate it here now publicly. They listen, right? I think that I think that speaks to this program. When I say that it's really rich in history, tradition, and a deep alumni base, I, I can't explain that and put that into metrics, but that should show you that's just scratching the surface, that you know, people were really happy about it. And that was just alumni from UCSD. And again, that is so important to me. So I, I hope to honor them and do right by them. I've talked to other we've had other coaches on the show that have ended up getting at their alma mater and they told me that one of the things they had to learn was you know they have high expectations for themselves and for the program but when you're an alum there's that added extra internal pressure that it's not necessary in that job and they kind of have to adapt to that is that something that you're subconscious about a little bit that you know you this is your dream job this is your alma mater but it's still, you know, you still got to do the job the way you've got to do the job. You can't do the extra, you know, think about, oh, wow, this is my alma mater. We got to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's that kind of a adjustment period there. That's totally fair. Um, and I'll, I will note that I'm five days in, so I haven't had to experience that. Glad yet. I could help. I will, I will note that, Eric, and I will thank you later for that tip. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, how have you changed? Uh, since you were a player and even like since you started coaching say you know you were at utah valley of course uc riverside how are you a different coach today than you were back then how are you a different person today than you were back then well i'm not a knucklehead anymore so that's something <laughs> <laughs> i was kind of the, the jokester of the team and anybody that knows me well enough would would be yes 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 that's you uh, um so, yeah, I think that, you know, over the years, being a head coach, like you learn and adapt and grow every year. And I, I really pride myself on being somebody that likes to keep learning. And um, I'm, I really, I think it's an important piece of who we are as coaches. Like we need to be spending a lot of time in the off season, you know, reading at least one new book and taking more courses from some of the best in our game. And it's not reinventing ourselves, so to speak, but just making sure that we're continuing to gain intelligence and edges in our sport so that we can help our, our players. Um, I think that I've had to do a lot of work on like generational knowledge, so learning how to connect to this generation. Um, you know, I've read a lot of books. I listen to a ton of podcasts. I listen to this podcast a lot. And, you know, I think that it's uh, it's important that we learn how to connect and, with our players and meet them where they are. If we try to do the same thing that I did when I first started coaching or the same thing I did, even when I first got the UCR job, I have to reinvent myself frequently in the sense of where I meet my players and how I speak to them. You know, sometimes I'll send them a long email and I know they won't read it, so I will do it in a video. And like, hey, just watch this really quick. It's 40 seconds instead of this long email you're going to have to scroll because they're out after that second paragraph. <laughs> so, you know, just things like that to try to, um, you know, make sure that we're coming to them at their level so they feel like they're being seen. That's a fantastic point I never thought of, of you getting ahead of it and seeing the changes, whether it be in communicating with the young people today 
they're not going to maybe relate as well to certain things like they would have, you know, compared to like five, ten years ago. It's totally different. Yet you've kind of been foreshadowing this, it sounds like, a little bit, to foreseeing how things are in the future. It seems like you're willing, you're able to adapt to wherever, you know, players, how they communicate, college athletics as a whole. It's changing every day. It seems like it seems like you're comfortable changing, which a lot of coaches are not comfortable cha- going with the change at the time. But it seems like you are. I try to be <clears throat> still remaining true to myself and my roots, but you know, the X's and O's of the game stay pretty much the same. I mean, we can always get better and get different edges and, you know, the technology piece, we could talk about that forever. We have to learn and grow with that, or we need to get out because it's a choice to be here. So we can complain about, Oh, our players never used to be like this. And now they're like this, or we can choose to say, okay, how can I adapt to meet their needs? So that the X's and O's remain the same. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm teaching the same thing I taught 10 years ago, but it's not being received the same. So it's not being, you know, implemented the same by my players. They can't um, access that knowledge because I'm not delivering it in a way that they can receive. And that's my responsibility to learn that, not theirs. That is fantastic point of view. Never, uh, I never thought of it that way. That's pretty good. A uh, couple things. How would you describe Nikki Palmer the player, and how uh, how would that go if it was Nikki Palmer the player, Nikki Palmer the head coach in the same room? How how would that go? Oh, I'm sure we would have a lot of laughs. That's a really funny <laughs> question. This is a funny <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm sure we would have a lot of laughs back and forth. I like to laugh and joke. I'm I'm kind of a jokester. Um, You know, me back then, I, I, I was very like tenacious and wanted to win really bad and wanted to be the one. Um, I think that um, the coach would appreciate my younger self players work ethic. I think I would uh, appreciate all the extra work. Um, I think that, I would love to work with her swing more. <laughs> I would love to be able to help my younger self hit hit better and understand my body better. Um, but, you know, yeah, ultimately, I think that at the end of it, my younger self would probably be just so proud of how far we've come and um, what we're doing now and, and sitting in this chair. So um, it's, yeah, it's an honor. Good honor there. And, of course, you play in a great league, the Big West. Uh Describe the Big West. You've competed in it. Um, I am fascinated by the league. I know there are coaches when we've talked to in the in the past feel uh, in the recent past they're excited. I know you're gonna have a conference tournament coming up. Obviously, with everything that's transpired with the Pac-12, I know there are coaches in the Big West. They feel they could be the conference of the West Coast as far as getting best talent and everything like uh, uh, recruiting and things like that. Just describe what it takes to be compete compete in the Big West with. The Long Beach State's under Kim Souter, obviously. You've got, you know, Kelly Ford at Fullerton. Uh, you got Joe Evans. You got, I mean, Charlotte Moore. The who, the who's who, as you know very well. Yeah, I love our coaches in the Big West. I think it's kind of fun. We all get along pretty well. I have a great relationship with all of them. Um, you know, poor Bob being the only man on on the panel there but um he does a great job fitting in and him and, but I he's, have in a really Hawaii, good... and he's in hawaii so nobody feels bad nobody feels sorry <laughs> no one feels bad for poor mom um but him and i have a great relationship too i i love my relationship with the coaches in fact i was on the phone with jenny two days ago for like an hour and kelly the day before for an hour um them just very supportive and congratulatory i think that you know in order to win in this conference it takes a lot um you've got to be gritty we play a double header day that changes a lot of things. That's really different. Um, so I think you got to have the pitching staff to be able to withstand a double header um, because, you know, having one ACE and some supplementary makes it difficult. Um, having a conference tournament, I think is going to change everything in a good way. I think that, um, you know, to, to your point, like having, you know, a premier sort of conference in, in Southern Cal- California based essentially, um, is going to be great. Fullerton's hosting the first conference tournament, and I anticipate that's going to be sold out. Think about it. Where can all these, this is one of the meccas of softball, and there's all these young softball 
football athletes and they're used to going to the UCLA's of the world to watch, but where are they going to go to watch a conference tournament here? And it's going to be the big West tournament. So I think the, the sky's the limit for us with that. Um, I'm when I was at Utah Valley, we won a conference tournament and went to regional. So I know the formula I'm comfortable with that space and being a win at all costs type of a mentality for that weekend. And I'm excited for it. Honestly, I think it's a huge opportunity for our conference and we can focus more on getting in at large bid um, in addition to that. And so maybe we can be a two or three postseason team conference in the not too far future. I think we have the personnel and certainly the coaches to do that in our conference. Yeah, that was the message I got from some of the coaches in the league. The reason you you know agreed to do the conference tournament is to get be more consistently a multi-bid league. You've been a multi-bid league. You've proven that as recently as two years ago, but it hasn't been maybe as consistent as you would like as a league, and you feel the conference tournament can help that because, you know, the regular season title races, which has been usually pretty dramatic, but at the same time, it seems like it hasn't helped you maybe if somebody wins the regular season title, then the other team wins a conference tournament title. That could get you multi-bids more uh, better chances of that happening at least right yep absolutely i think it'll be great for us all right uh last question before we let you go you got a busy schedule there uh on staff what do you think will be the the game plan between now and say fall ball uh that you need to get accomplished with this group uh before we even talk about games in february forget that just kind of building this team and building that chemistry that you're going to want to have before the start of the season? What are, what are some of the keys between that, accomplishing that starting now, going into the fall? Um, I find it really important to get to know my players as people. Like, I know that we can teach the game. I know that I can make them better immediately. Um, and, and same with my staff. I know that we're going to get better. Um, I definitely need to add some more transfers. I know I've mentioned that a few times just to make sure that we're in a good competitive spot. But I think the most important thing for me between now and then, besides besides the training that we need to do on the field and what have you, is is to get to know each other as people. Um, the coaching element and the receiving of information comes so much easier when they know me as a human and not as coach um, and vice versa. I want to know them as people. I, I enjoy taking my players to coffee multiple times a week. I love coffee. It gives me an excuse. You know, I think that taking them one-on-ones or um, sitting down with them and discussing their goals and, and just about their life outside of softball is so important. And it peels back a lot of those layers rapidly so that we can get into what we need to get into on the field and find success faster. Um, if I just come in here and bark at them for a couple months, I don't think we're going to get the same results on the field as we could. Um, if we really get to know them as people. And that's just how I coach. I, I love my players. I love them hard and I coach them harder. And, you know, I think that um, I think it's going to help this program a lot. I think we're going to see some really good things from UC San Diego softball in the very near future. That is Nikki Palmer, head coach, UC San Diego. There you go. Sounds pretty good. Uh, coach, congratulations uh, on, on, on getting back home, if, if you will, and everything you've you've been able to do and, overcoming adversity like that you know certainly that accident there i know that that gets puts everything into perspective and it seems to me you would try you take every day with uh, and try to enjoy the best you can because it's not a given uh which i think it's great mindset to have but uh thanks for taking the time from this hectic uh, schedule you've got currently there to talk to us a few minutes and telling us your story we look forward to having you back on the show uh as we get closer to the start of the season but uh, in the meantime thanks for uh, talking to us here on in the circle Thanks for all you do for the game. Go Tritons.